How's it going, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 565. Today, Andrew and I are talking about the movie, Best of the Best. I'm Jeremy Lesnick. I'm your host for the show, joined by Andrew Adams. And everything we do here at Whistlekick is in support of the traditional martial arts. If you want to know more about what we're doing to support you, go to whistlekick.com. That's where you'll find everything we're involved in. And one of the things we've got there is the store. Check out the store. We're adding new items all the time. And if you haven't, maybe you can make a purchase. Maybe you can support us. Maybe you can use the code PODCAST15 to save 15%. And if there's nothing over there you want now, check out the sign up for the newsletter. Now, if you want the website for this show, it's completely different. Whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And over there, you're going to find every episode we've ever done. We don't put any of those behind a paywall. We give you transcripts. We give you links, videos, audio. This episode is in video as well as audio. You'll find the video at YouTube. And I lost my place on my sheet. And if you want to support <laughs> the work that we do beyond making a purchase, you got a number of other ways you can help. You could share what we're doing with others. You know, tell, if, if you have friends that train, tell them, hey, have you heard about Whistlekick? You know what they're doing? You know what they're doing for us? You could follow us on social media. We're at Whistlekick everywhere you could imagine. You could support the Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash whistlekick. If you support us with as little as two that many dollars a month, we're going to give you stuff back. We give you behind the scenes information. And the more you're willing to contribute, we've got a number of different tiers, the more we're going to give you back. So, you know, it's all about value. We try to give you more than you give us because, well, we love you. We thank you. We appreciate you. I shouldn't say we. I don't know. Maybe Andrew doesn't love you. I, do. I, 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 love, I, you. I love you too. Yeah. <laughs> so... A few weeks ago, I sent Andrew a list of all the ideas that we'd ever thought of doing podcast episodes on and never got to. And he picked out, oh, let's do one on best of the best. And I'd probably been avoiding it because I don't know that I've ever seen it. I've heard of it. Uh, if you go back after like the first hundred and something interviews we did back when I was, you know, I had to follow a script because I was a terrible interviewer. I asked every guest, what's your favorite martial arts movie? And we went back and tabulated those. And guess what? Best of the best was, I think it was number, where are my notes? I think it was number six. Mm -hmm. Yes, the six best martial arts movie is selected by our first hundred or so martial arts radio guests. It's Chuck Liddell's favorite martial arts movie. It is Chuck Liddell's favorite movie. You, you read the same limited trivia pages on Wikipedia <laughs> and IMDb that I did. <laughs> and so... On Friday, as Andrew and I were, were communicating about what we were going to talk about today, I realized, oh, yeah, we're going to talk about that movie. I should rewatch it. Or, as I realized very quickly, watch it for the first time. And uh, I did. I watched it. And now we're going to talk about it. And there might be a bit of foreshadowing in my voice. <laughs> what do you think, Andrew? <laughs> yeah. Um. What do you think of this movie? I I will go on the record as saying it is my favorite martial arts movie of all time. Seriously. Ser I'm not this is not I'm not being facetious at all. I I love the movie for it's for the sake of the for the for it being a movie and what it's about, the subject and how it's handled, I love it. Do and I'm sure we'll get into it. Do I love the fight scenes? And think that it that the martial arts in it is amazing? No. But the movie, for the movie's sake, I do I do love this movie. Not gonna lie. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna respond to what you just said with a slight inter a slight shift in your language. It is a movie. <laughs> best of the best is a movie, and I think that that is its most redeeming quality. I will oh, confess really? that oh. there that that somehow this movie is greater than the sum of its parts, but its parts are horrible. <laughs> this is one of the worst movies I have ever oh, seen in my man. life. Oh. The acting is terrible. The dialogue is terrible. The fight scenes are horrid. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It is the worst thing I've ever seen James Earl Jones in. Leading me to believe that he is able to, he is such a great actor that he's able to act on a sliding scale and they gave him less money. So he <laughs> acted worse. <laughs> I genuinely believe that. Oh, that's all you're going to pay me. I'm going to do a crap job. 
That's what I think happened. All right. Okay. Now I took a look and I, I didn't, I didn't have a chance to, to dig deeper, but the budget for this film was $5 million. And keep yeah. in mind that they recorded in the U S and in Korea. So I'm pretty sure they ate most of that up in travel and food. Yeah. And we, we should also state just so people know, like if you haven't watched this movie and you wish to, before you hear this, you should pause. You go should watch absolutely. The movie. If you are, the, if you think you might want to watch this gonna, movie. We're probably going to get into some spoilers, you know, so just, I, I don't, I don't think so. I think that if you ask someone, there's a movie that's marsh that has some martial arts in it called best of the best. What do you think the plot is? I bet most people would get 75% of the way there. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. I, I think they would hit the high points, especially if they've seen other martial arts movies. Now here's an important piece. The entire filming was done in less than two months. Yeah. It was released in theaters seven months after that. What does that tell me? This was a pretty low budget film. They don't have to change perfection, Jeremy. Huh? They don't have to, you know, they don't have have to rush it because it was perfect already. You know, they. Uh, Perfectly imperfect. (laughs) maybe. No. and, And so I'm watching this movie and, and I'm realizing that it's this really interesting intersection of a bunch of very strange things. Uh, and, and no no disrespect to, uh, what's his name, Philip Ree? Yes. The, the, the star of the film, uh, who also wrote the script. He, he wrote a script so he could star in a movie. I would totally do that. I would absolutely do that. I have friends who have been in movies. None of them have won awards for their acting. But I would still love to do it. I would I would happily be in a film and act terribly because I'm not an actor. But here's the thing. If you're going to have a martial arts movie, you should at least have some reasonable quality martial arts from more than two people in the entire film. Actually, yeah. I would say two and a half. I would say the, the, the woman, despite having the widest, I'm pretty sure, made of denim belt. <laughs> yep. There was something really weird about that belt. Um, I don't think it was an a, actual martial arts belt. I think they sewed like a couple uh, uh, ratchet straps together and put it around her waist. Although the knot was tied correctly, so I'll give them props yep. on that. Uh, she showed some competency. But everybody else, they, they there must not have been much training for, hey, here's how you do this. Well, and and the the lead character Philip Ree and who he fights at the end that you know his his Simon Ree his brother right their martial arts was legit like yes. I, I without a doubt for yeah, sure they, they were they were skilled and it really came through and I was I was appreciative when we got to that fight and and I would say and I I didn't find anything on this and maybe you did in your in your research. In watching it, I specifically looked at it this time. And and I first saw this movie in high school, right? I was just started out training. That might be where some of my nostalgia comes from, for sure. And I, I recognize that. Um, but in watching it this time, I made a point to watch the fight scenes to be able to determine, did they use stunt doubles or did the actors, did Sean Penn, or not Sean Penn, Chris Penn really do his fight scenes? And from what I can tell by watching it, there wasn't a lot of cutaways and things. I, I think they legitimately did their own, their, yes. their own fighting. And I think, uh, the most of the, the, actors on the taekwondo exhibition team the korean team i think were martial artists yes and I obviously agree. philip Ree is eric roberts does have some some degree of training i believe he has a black belt in taekwondo um but I, I would assume that that rank came after this film it could i don't know that i don't know <laughs> <laughs> but the rest of them you know chris penn John Dye, David Agresta. I mean, they they were throwaway characters in the movie. You know, yes. they, they did a good job, I think, of fleshing out uh, Philip Ree's character and Alex uh, Eric Robertson's character. Mm-hmm. But the other three on the team were, pre- you know, pretty pretty much throwaway characters for sure. It was really clear to me that this entire movie was how do we make Rocky that's not completely derivative? Yeah, yeah, I would agree. And if you watch. If you watch the training, the fact, if you watch any of it, they wanted this to be a boxing movie. 
how do we make a, a Rocky ripoff that isn't going to cost us much money? That's what they did. And it shows. You, you, you look at the way they train. You look at the way James Earl Jones character talks to them. There's a boxing ring. They're wearing, they're, they're using boxing pads. And, and yeah, gear availability was different in the yep. 80s. I understand that. I trained then. I, I know. They didn't have whistle kick gear. They did not have whistle kick gear. But there were options, and I, I didn't see. You know, it's clear Adidas paid some money. Oh, sure. Toward this movie, and if you look at everything else, they were doing their best to hide logos. But I think my issues with the movie are are much more fundamental. It's not the way it was implemented. It was the it was the philosophical aspects. We saw how many martial artists you know, that, that got names, you know, you got the five guys on the Korean team. You got the five guys on the American slash North American karate slash martial arts team, depending on where you are in the film, they use those terms interchangeably, which drove me insane. Um, how many of them were jerks and did not represent the martial arts ethos that we have all grown up with understanding is common to even uh, beyond in what we do most people who train become better people most people I, i've been to plenty of competitions the vast majority of people even at the highest levels are good people mm -hmm. and so here we have this film where even in the beginning we're seeing people being complete jerks and it really bothered me in fact i, th I think i had a note somewhere in here that this this movie set martial arts back hmm interesting see i would i are you are you speaking specifically of chris penn's character travis uh not just him but yes yeah because one could make the argument that he by the end of the movie definitely turned around and was he quote, got a little better the... yeah yeah but i wouldn't call that turned around well we don't know what happened after because I'm I'm choosing to ignore best of the best two, three, and four. I haven't seen them. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jeremy. They're that's worse. Right. Yeah, they are. <laughs> oh. I love you too much to make oh, you watch them. Don't worry, man. I, I you know what? Now I am actually more interested in that <laughs> statement because I I kind of want to see how it gets worse. <laughs> Uh, I, I think, you know, one of the things to know is that this came at an interesting time because it was released in 89. Uh, obviously, I, I don't know when Philip rewrote the script, but the timing of this falls right on the heels of Taekwondo's inclusion in the Summer Olympics as a demonstration sport. 1988 is when that first happened. And so here we have this movie releasing in, in November of 89. He very well may have watched the Olympics and said, you know what? I bet we can do something with this. The timing of this is, is there. And so from that position, I I dig it, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I like the fact that there was an effort to put martial arts more front and center for people. Um, in, in 2015, he did say that he's trying to get a reboot off the ground. I did see that. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know I'd... if I'm wanting that or not wanting that. I'd watch it. <laughs> um, the dude with the hair, Eric Roberts, yeah, Julia Roberts' brother, mm -hmm. has over six hundred acting credits. Oh, he's a yeah, he's he's done a lot. And if you look at them, it's n almost none of them are of significance. I didn't look at all of them because it's too many. Yeah, but he'll do. You know, he'll have ten, twelve credits per year. You know, as he's doing these small parts and voiceovers and. Um, I yeah, I don't know much yeah. that he's done that he is the lead in. He did a great movie on fencing, uh, called <laughs> By the Sword. That was it was good. Although you, apparently, Jeremy, you're not going to take my word for I'm what I'm not going to trust is. your recommendations on movies <laughs> ever. <laughs> um, but yeah, he he is he is a big actor in terms of his the, the credits that he has, but he's not a leading actor much. Right. right. Uh. I had issue with the choreography because there was so many wrestling movements. Yeah. You know what? what there. Uh, 
I don't know what was going on. I don't know who choreographed this stuff. And I tried to dig in. It was a small stunt team, which I was actually really impressed with. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as, as a great example, towards the end where they're, they're breaking blocks, if you watch um, the, the dude with the cowboy hat, what was his name? Uh, Travis Brickley. Okay. Chris Penn. If, yep. Okay. If you watch Travis's character and the way he sets up to break, you know, it's a stack of concrete slabs which I'm pretty sure were made of foam. But if you, if you watch the trajectory of his hand, he wasn't hitting with the proper knuckles. He was hitting with the next knuckles down. He would have mm-hmm. obliterated his hand. And you could see that just before they cut, cut the shot. And so it's little things like that that make me say, wait a second. You could have edited that a little bit better so it wouldn't have been quite as obvious. And I... I Anybody who's been following the show for a long time knows that I'm incredibly passionate about martial arts and I'm very protective of it. And I am not someone who says that this is a right way, this is a wrong way. But if you're demonstrating breaking and it is obvious that the character is meant to have some competency and you're demonstrating that that character in a film is breaking six, eight, one inch concrete pavers with spacers. Uh, and their, their hand positioning would clearly break their hand that's wrong i'm willing to go on record and say that's wrong and it's lazy filmmaking and it bothers me Mm -hmm. i can't imagine that anybody would watch this film especially back then being fairly new to martial arts because because remember you know prior to the 80s most people's exposure to martial arts culture came from a handful of movies it was it was bruce lee's stuff it was billy jack's stuff uh, a bunch of people had seen, you know, Kung Fu theater stuff on on Saturdays or maybe, you know, they, they lived somewhere where there was a theater showing these films. But those were distant enough from reality that people weren't saying, you know what? I don't want to do this. I don't want to distance myself from this. They, they weren't making a, a judgment based on reality. And yet here we have people, some of them may have seen Taekwondo in the Olympics in 88, and then they watch this film and they say, everybody in this movie is a, is a jerk. I, I want to cuss here, but we don't do that on this show. Everybody in this movie is a jerk. I don't want to do this, and I don't want my children involved in this. And that's that's really where I struggle. All right, I get that point. Yeah, I, I can see where you're coming from. You know, when, when I first saw this, I was in high school, so arguably I was already a jerk. <laughs> so it didn't affect me in that way. Um you know, for me, what, what gets me is every time, and this is no exception. I watched this, uh, you know, last week. No exception. The end of the movie, I get choked up every time. And it's interesting you bring that up because that that moment with Eric Roberts with, you know, the hair. Uh, I had to admit that I felt emotional about this. And whether it was the mild amount of character development they had done for him. Mm-hmm. Or the fact that there's really nothing like an 80s training montage to to get you pumped up. But here he is, you know, we, we've got the conflict kind of coming to a crescendo towards the end, and and he's gotta overcome. And you know, this this is this is standard in any of these martial arts films, really, especially any that have competition in them. And I felt myself getting a little emotional too. And it's it's funny you bring that up because I noticed that about myself and I was surprised. Mm. I was really interested that this happened and it made me write down is this movie bad or is it so bad that it's good does it manage to come back around because everything else is secondary to a few moments like this that resonate and and there's some humanity to them and i'm I'm fully aware that you know that happened for me what do you think um i it could be i mean i'll I'll tell you i i remember I remember pretty vividly. I remember where we were living at the time when I was in high school, I watched this movie and I thought it was so good. I wanted to share it with my mom and my mom's like, okay. Cause you know, she's my mom and she loves me. And she saw that this was a movie that I really wanted her to watch. Yeah. And so my mom who knows nothing about martial arts other than she would bring me to, to the dojo a few times a week. Um, you know, not didn't mm. train herself. Right. And we sat down and watched this and she cried at the end. Mm, interesting 
So, uh, and I remember that. And I remember, I remember crying too. I was like, and even, I mean, I didn't, I didn't cry when I watched it last week, but I definitely got choked up. I was like, this is an emotional ending. You know, when, when Dehan limps his way over to Tommy to, to, to give him his medal, which he didn't have to do. I mean, he didn't, right. he, he didn't, I mean, one can make the argument he didn't win Tommy. He really did, but he didn't, you know, yeah. you know, it, it, that's emotional. And, right. uh, you know, that to me, that brings it around at the end. And, and I think that that's, you know, it's funny as we're talking this out and I'm kind of reflecting on the film, that last 15 minutes of the film is really all that matters. Yeah. But yet without the, the first hour and 15 minutes, that last 15 doesn't do anything. It doesn't make any sense. So I wrote down that last fight scene, despite the fact that, you know, you have two Taekwondo practitioners uh, doing a, a fair amount of non-Taekwondo, which I found interesting. I'm not, I'm not going to critique it because mm -hmm. um, it was at least quality movement. Yeah. But there was that moment, and I don't want to give this away because this is a big spoiler, but that match does not end the way anyone would have imagined. Yep. If you were to predict what was going on with this film, there's no way you're getting that. It's it's not quite a twist, but it's surprising. Yep. And I think that for that reason alone, I think everything leads up to that that moment. And yeah, there are a lot of ways it could have been done better, could have built the backstory more, could have could have had more. But I, I suspect that a lot of this was restrict, restricted by budget. You know, whoever whoever produced the film probably said, you know, we've got a hole in the production schedule. We've got this budget over here. We've got a November release that maybe fell through. And if you can get this done, we'll put it out. That, that's, that's my suspicion on, on how all this went, but I, yeah, I didn't could find be. anything to validate that. Yeah, it could be. The movie also had some really, I thought some really good quotes. Okay. Um, the, probably my favorite one is that a, a team is not a team. If you don't give a damn about one another, mm. I, I love that quote. I really do. Cause I think it's true. If you don't care about the people you're with, right. you, you know, you're going to, and that's true. Whether we're talking about in this case, the U S national karate team, or whether you're talking soccer or, right. you know, whatever. I agree. I agree. And, and the team dynamic is something that I think martial arts schools could, could lean into a little bit more. You know, it's yes, it is an individual uh, sport or hobby or whatever you want to call it pursuit but it's really hard to progress without the dedication of other people along mm -hmm. that path and and um i like that they brought that out at least a little yep yeah, I, th I thought that was good. Um, and there were some funny quotes in it as well. You know, uh, Virgil talking to Sonny Grasso uh, and Sonny's like, you know, hi, hi, you know, I'm Sonny Grasso. I'm Italian. And Virgil saying, I used to be Italian. Now I'm Buddhist. I'm just kidding. I was never Italian. Like, that's a funny <laughs> line. Like <laughs> there, there was some humor. There was definitely that 80s cheesy humor. And, you know, I, I kind of wish I'd watched it back in the 80s. I really yeah. do. I, I think it would have would have landed better. Um, and maybe I need to watch it again because I had a similar experience the first time I watched The Princess Bride, which I didn't watch until my 20s. Oh, really? And hated. But I watched it again like a year ago and I said, I'm going to really work hard to pretend I'm 10 years old and watch this again. And yeah. it was a far better experience. Yeah. I'm curious what you thought on, I mean, I, I know you were not a fan of the, the martial arts they did, but Eric Roberts character, the hair yeah, guy, the right? hair guy, the hair guy, so much um, hair. he, his fighting stance was very unique. Um, and I think they did it that way. I think to showcase, because he, 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 because he had had shoulder surgery on his right arm mm -hmm. in the movie, not in mm -hmm. real life. Right. Um, so he, you know, his, he had to change up how he fought, which I thought was interesting because as I understand it, Bill Superfoot Wallace did the same thing essentially. Yes. Yeah. So the, the reason Bill fights with a side stance is because of, of an injury to his right knee, mm -hmm. uh, from, from judo. He just caught a bad throw. Um, it looked like Eric Roberts wanted to fight in a boxing stance and they kind of tweaked it from there. Mm -hmm. you know i i 
they definitely talked a lot about his his injury and how that was relevant. And of course, you know, you, you know that's gonna play in towards the end. You know, they foreshadow that pretty hard. Oh yeah. Uh but I I I'll admit there were points I had to, in, in the middle of the fight fights, I had to turn away. I was I was disgusted. I really was. Some of the choreography was so atrocious. Uh and it angered me. It re- it really did. Like I, hmm. I it, um, you know, it, because and here's why. It would not have been that hard to make some adjustments, to make things a little more accurate. That's fair. That's it, a fair it assessment. Is not hard. I can, It is not hard for me to teach someone how to throw a back fist and a reverse punch and a front kick, and to keep their hands up, and to keep their hands up. And I could choreograph a better fight with back fist, reverse punch, front kick than at least two of the five people on the American team. Yep. That's fair. I'll give you that. That's and, fair. And so, and so that, that's what bothers me is that it, I, I know that achieving a high level of choreography and, and really making a great fight scene is a ton of work, but making a, a passable fight scene is not. Yeah. And they didn't even get to that level most of the time. And that really frustrated me. I love the uh, the pressure sensitive bag. I haven't seen one of those in years. I don't think anybody sells them anymore. Yeah. The one that tracks uh, pounds of force. Yeah, we broke one in our old dojo. And that's why nobody has them anymore <laughs> because whoever was making them stopped selling them and everybody broke them because yep. everybody would line up and drill it with the biggest side or roundhouse kick they could throw at it. <laughs> yeah. So I want to talk a little bit. One, one more, one more point I wanted to yeah. discuss was the bar fight. Mm. One of the things that I really enjoyed about the bar fight uh, was it. First off, it happened because Travis was being a jerk, right? Yep. And I and I get that and I recognize that. Uh, but I thought Philip Ree's character Tommy did a good job of at least trying, and it and it showed how he was yes. trying to de-escalate the situation. Uh, you know, he, he, he did the thing where he, he, you know, roundhouse kicked the cigarette out of the guy's mouth and then back to like, showed mm. him a move. Like, this is what I could do. Like I could have kicked your face basically mm. kicks it out of his mouth and then starts to back away say, you know, here, we're not here. You know, we don't want to fight. And, and, you know, some other people came up, but I thought that was good. He, he did a good job of at least attempting to deescalate the situation. You know, it's funny. And as showing you think- how he didn't want to fight. Right. I, I think I have a, a, a different perspective on the movie, just as you said that. What if I consider Philip Ree's character the only martial artist? Yeah, that's fair. If I do that, it completely changes things for me. Because even in, in the bar, at the end of the, that fight, James Earl Jones smiles. He well, brought I them think, there knowing they were going to get into a bar fight. And that was one of my notes, that I think the coach let them have the bar fight just to see if they would work as a team. Which is not a good thing to have happen. No, because it's it's not martial arts. It's gross, um, and it's not literal team combat. It's not five on five at the same time. Yep. Right. So the demonstration of those skills aren't terribly relevant. The idea that they're they're getting each other's back, I I I can see that, but I, there are plenty of other ways that you could have done that. Oh, absolutely. You know, you you could do some trust falls and some rope courses. Yep, yep. <laughs> we we all did those at some point, right? High school yep. or corporate events or whatever. Yeah. I also found it interesting that there were no women in the tournament. Excuse me to uh, pick the U.S. team. I don't know if you noticed that. I did, I did, and and again, that's kind of what, if I remember correctly, when Taekwondo launched in '88, wasn't it only men? I don't recall there being women. I don't, I don't now, remember. I might be wrong. And if I'm wrong, I apologize. But that's... Here, I'll tell you what. Where's my phone? I will look that up. And and I don't even mean you, just you the Korean team. I say that, please. Yeah. Uh, th- I mean, the U.S. team as well. I mean, they have a they have a huge tournament, you know, in the U.S. to, to, to pick the, the five people that are going to be on the U.S. national karate team, which I also found interesting that they were going to be taking place in a Taekwondo exhibition match. I, I, I definitely found that a little strange. But you know, when they're picking them after, after the tournament happens, you know, all, you know, 300 of them or whatever are sitting on the floor 
and not one of them is female, which I found interesting. I, I, I take it back. Uh, 1980, from what I'm catching here real quick, there were women in 88. Okay. So no, that, that women did exist. In, women did exist in 1988. Women, yes. women did do martial arts in 1988, <laughs> 89. Yes. Yes. I can. <laughs> not, not only do we, not only did I experience that, I, we, we have, we have proof. We have Wikipedia <laughs> proof that that happened. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, Again, I think it would have been a more complex movie that they would have had to figure out because, you know, one thing that's really interesting in this film, there's no there's no romance. Yeah, you're right. There's, there's... no romantic story arc, which is really rare in any kind of film. Yep. Yep. The only other trivia thing I'll, I'll put out, because not everyone will necessarily wa- uh, read the IMDb uh, re- and do the research that we did, that it was right. interesting to see the connection between actors in this movie and the friday the 13th movies oh i don't watch those movies i, I don't either but I it live was in the woods already i don't i don't need to <laughs> i don't the, need to be terrified the character that the actor that travis gets in a fight with in the bar mm-hmm. uh bert his real name is in the movie his name is bert I can't remember what his real name is but uh he is the actor that plays jason in the friday the 13th movies Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and the woman, there's a woman in that bar scene as well, Melanie Kinnaman, who I believe is the girl that Virgil go- is, is dancing with. Uh, she was in Friday the 13th, number five. Just that, an interesting. Those are, that's yeah, some deep yeah. cut trivia right there. Andy. Yeah, right there. <laughs> All right. Wow. Have we kicked this horse enough? Oh, probably. I could kick it on for another hour, but I don't know I about can't. you. <laughs> I can't. I, I don't have it in me. That's fair. So so if anybody out there wants to kick the dead horse of best of the best with Andrew, please do. Or a uh, uh, a reprise of this discussion, we'll bring you on. I'll, I'll you know, I'll I'll probably step out of that one or maybe I'll <laughs> maybe I'll moderate, I don't know. I'll do I'll do something. Um I hope I never have to watch it again. I think that's You're, my final thought. But but you have to watch it again to see if you have that same feeling. I don't I don't know that I can. Maybe when the PTSD wears off. Okay. All right. Next episode, best of the best two. Got it. <laughs> you know what, Jeremy? You can't find it. You can't watch it anywhere. It's not it's available. Already for on my computer. Really? Where did you find? I looked for it. I couldn't find it. I was gonna watch it just for. I've fun. got all four of them on, on my. Oh computer. my goodness. <laughs> I got them. Don't worry. Oh boy. You can find anything if you work hard enough. Fair enough. All right. So thank you. Thank you for that conversation and and your research and your encouragement to have me watch it. Because even if I strongly disliked it, it's still part of martial arts culture. Uh, it has it, it occupies a place. And I'm going to guess that if you haven't watched it, listeners slash viewers, that we have sparked your interest either because Andrew really loves it or because I really hated it. And (laughs) for one of those reasons, maybe both, you're going to be interested in checking it out. So have at it. If you want to see notes, maybe Jeremy, maybe, uh, maybe in a, in a month or so, we'll put a poll up on the Facebook page. Did you like the movie? Yes. Yes. It was a good call. Yeah. Let's do that. If you want to check out what we said today, you know, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Look at photos, videos. I've got some links that I'm going to get in the show notes. Andrew, if you've got any, make sure you send those to me. We'll include them. And if you want to support us and all the work that we're doing, you've got some choices. You could go to whistlekick.com, use the code podcast15. You might also check out one of the books we've got on Amazon. We're constantly adding volumes over there. Uh, You could tell others about the show or you could support the Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. You've got somebody out there wearing something with whistlekick on it. Say hello. And if you've got guest suggestions, topic suggestions, let us know. Jeremy at whistlekick.com. That's it for today. Until next time, train hard, train hard smile, smile, and have, have a great a day. Great day.